In an interview with Kremlin propagandist Solovyov, the commander of Akhmat, Apti Alodinov, emphasized that his unit refuses to have any contact with the soldiers from the DPRK. The main and only reason is that they are all atheists, godless, reports the channel. According to Apti Alodinov, it is wrong when the country is defended by atheists. At the same time, he is not against other religions that Putin's soldiers profess, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. But he is categorically against the North Koreans because they have no god. Moreover, the commander of the Kadyrovites threatened Kim's soldiers with reprisals if they say a crooked word about the prophet of any religion. Earlier, Apti Alodinov refused to exchange Chechen prisoners of war in Ukrainian captivity, advising them to wash off their shame with blood and be slaughtered instead. Alodinov was responding to an appeal from his brother Kadyrovites who were pleading to be released from captivity. He delivered a lengthy tirade about the disgrace of surrendering to Chechens, finishing up by advising them to take a pen or a nail, pounce on someone, and do all they could to die fighting and end their lives, like men. Meanwhile, footage from Kursk region is already being actively published on the internet in which you can see soldiers from the DPRK. Moreover, some of them are not only on the front lines, but also in hospitals and clinics. South Korean intelligence recently reported that the Russian Defense Ministry has transferred 10,000 of Kim's soldiers to Kursk region. Some of them are in the frontline zone. Overall, the Russians plan to deploy five DPRK units, each with 3,000 troops, along a front line stretching about 1,500 kilometers. They will be stationed in the northeast, east, and southeast of Ukraine. We estimate there are at least 10,000 North Korean troops in the Kursk region, and that number could increase slightly as we continue to monitor their presence. Pentagon spokesman Pat Ryder said, using the acronym for DPRK, the official name of North Korea. Last week, South Korea's defense ministry said about 10,000 North Korean soldiers had been deployed to Russia. A spokesman for the ministry Chung Ha Kyo said many of those troops were deployed to forward positions but did not elaborate. UK Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer on Wednesday congratulated Donald Trump on what he called an historic election victory. As the closest of allies, the UK and US will continue to work together to protect our shared values of freedom and democracy. And having had dinner with President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago, I look forward to working with him in the years to come," he said. Starmer stressed that strong relations between the US and the UK were crucial. Last month, Starmer rejected a claim by Trump's campaign that his Labour Party was illegally interfering in the US presidential election by sending party officials to support Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign. Mr. Speaker, can I begin by congratulating President-elect Trump on his historic election victory. As the closest of allies, the UK and US will continue to work together to protect our shared values of freedom and democracy. And having, having had dinner with President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago, I look forward to working with him in the years to come. The Foreign Secretary and I did meet uh, President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago uh, for dinner for about a couple of hours and we uh, discussed a number of issues of global significance. It was a very constructive uh, exercise. But seriously, Mr Speaker, we live in probably more volatile world than we've lived in for many decades. It is absolutely crucial that we have a strong relationship, that strong special relationship forged in difficult circumstances between the US and the UK. We will continue to work, as we have done in the four months in government, on issues of security, our economy and global conflict. A Russian rocket blasted off successfully on Tuesday to carry a pair of Iranian satellites into orbit a launch that reflected growing cooperation between Moscow and Tehran. The Soyuz rocket lifted off as scheduled from Vostokny launch pad in far eastern Russia and put its payload into a designated orbit nine minutes after the launch. It was carrying two Russian ionosphere M Earth observation satellites and several dozen smaller satellites, including the two Iranian ones. Iran's two satellites, named Khauzar and Hadhad, were the first launched on behalf of the country's private sector. 
In 2022, a Russian rocket launched an Iranian Earth observation satellite called Kayam that was built in Russia on Tehran's order, and in February Russia put another Iranian satellite named PARS-1 into orbit. Tuesday's launch comes as Russia and Iran have expanded ties in various spheres. Ukraine and the West have accused Tehran of providing Moscow with hundreds of exploding drones for use on the battlefield in Ukraine and helped launch their production in Russia. The Iranian drone deliveries, which Moscow and Tehran have denied, have allowed for a constant barrage of long-range drone strikes at Ukraine's infrastructure. Moscow and Tehran are planning to further bolster their ties with a comprehensive strategic partnership that is set to be signed during Iranian President Masoud Pazeshkian's planned visit to Russia. The date for that visit hasn't been set yet, but the Kremlin said it could happen soon. Tuesday's successful launch of the Iranian satellites atop a Russian rocket follows a series of failed launches suffered by Iran's civilian space program in recent years. There have been five failed launches in a row for the Simorg program, a satellite-carrying rocket. A fire at the Imam Khomeini spaceport in February 2019 killed three researchers, authorities said at the time. A launch pad rocket explosion later that year drew the attention of then-President Donald Trump, who taunted Iran with a tweet showing what appeared to be a U.S. surveillance photo of the site. At the same time, a separate Iranian space program run by the country's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard has seen successful launches from a military base outside of Sharout, some 350 kilometers east of the capital, Tehran. However, satellite images analyzed by the Associated Press show Israel likely bombed the site during its October 26 retaliatory strike on Iran. The U.S. intelligence community's worldwide threat assessment this year said Iran's development of satellite launch vehicles would shorten the timeline for Iran to develop an intercontinental ballistic missile because it uses similar technology. Прошел контакт подъема. Двигатели центрального и боковых блоков вышли на режим главной ступени. 10 секунд. Параметры системы управления ракетоносителя в норме. 20 секунд. Двигатели первой и второй ступени работают. 